Okay, everybody, good day. Welcome to the Wikibon Peer Insight Research Meeting, where practitioners discuss challenging problems in the data center. I'm your host and moderator, Dave Vellante. Today, we're pleased to have Justin Bell, network engineer at Strand. Welcome, Justin. Please say hello to the Wikibon community. Hi, everyone. Headquartered in Madison, Wisconsin, Strand Associates is a multidiscipline engineering design firm with nearly 400 employees and 11 offices in the U.S. And we're going to talk today about how Justin and his team architected a remote office backup and recovery solution. So, Justin, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your role at Strand, please? Sure. I'm a network engineer. Um, we have a pretty small IT staff. There's five full-time IT staff in Madison, and then we have two full-time IT staff in different remote offices. So there's only seven of us total serving all 400 users. I'm in charge of the backup and recovery. Across all the offices, we're running about 20 terabytes. How did you handle backup remote offices before you started this project? Prior to starting this project, we had basically a tape drive in every office along with a set of tapes, a backup server running backup exec, and every night we would run a differential tape, and then on Fridays we would run a full backup tape. Now, because we only had two remote admins, that meant that six of the sites had an engineer or a secretary or someone like that running their backup tapes. We only had a 40% success rate. Can you talk about how you architected a solution to this problem? Sure. Um, I'll start at the server level. So you've got the, the remote server, and it's got DAS, internal DAS storage that it serves out to the clients, the number of file shares on it. On that server, there's an agent called DiskSafe. Basically, it's a write split, asynchronous write splitter that runs on there. You present it with some LUNs from an iSCSI device, which is the Falcon Store CDP product. And then it manages splitting off the writes from the primary that are coming into the primary, then caching them a little bit in RAM, depending on the throughput, and then pushing them out to the ones that you present off the CDP device. From there, we take snapshots once an hour. We're able to keep those hourly snapshots back for two weeks. From there on, we keep daily snapshots for three months, weekly snapshots for a year, and monthly snapshots for a year and a half. That really helped us also prove to the CEO and the IT management that we're going to also be able to keep stuff historically long enough in each office that it will actually be an improvement over what we had available for restores historically over tape. Can you talk a little bit about the decision to go with Falcon Store? Uh, you bet. We had looked at a ton of competitors. There were two biggest sticking points of requirements that we have that we felt were really important, and that is having two copies of the data in each office that were easily accessible and that you could recover quickly. Our second concern was the historical copies. We wanted to be able to have at least the same amount of coverage we did with tape as far as historical copies in that office. And so that means we had to keep copies back at least a year. And so that also took out some of the competition. i got two questions here. How many boxes did you put in at each remote office? You put in a CDP. That's it. You got your two copies of data by still having the internal server DAS and exactly. the CDP, right? Exactly. Yep. Okay. And then that replicates to the central site and goes on to what? It replicates to the central site and goes on to another CDP device. Are you using DDoP? Nope. We decided after looking at the amount of storage that we're actually using that we didn't need it. The question. What's your main backup software? Uh, the only backup software that we run now is one copy of Backup Exec. The uh, replication, can you basically say without Riverbed, is essentially this, this wouldn't really work? Actually, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked it. When we originally implemented the system, we had decided to use the Riverbed appliances. and that caused a lot of animosity for my network guy because we were worried that with the amount of data that we were going to end up pushing, it would clear out the cache and it would make it less effective by having a high turnover in the cache and not storing as much data that the users needed. After we implemented it, it was pretty obvious that because Falcon Store has this microscan option where it sends really small blocks anyway, now we bypass our riverbed devices so that the cache doesn't turn over as much. 
and we basically exempt the traffic that goes in between our Falcon Store devices from the riverbed. Wasn't there a, uh, on the initial seating of your, your remote <laughs> device to the home? I mean, isn't that a big deal? Yeah, that was a big deal. What we were able to do is schedule a throttle on that replication. Basically, it said at 6 a.m., throttle the data back so that it can only use about an eighth of the, the T1. So really not much data going back and forth at all, but it kept it alive to the point where we didn't have to start over. Then at 6 o'clock at night, we said open up the throttle, use the whole pair of T1s. There's actually a pair of T1s that go to Joliet. Go there and then at 6 a.m., pull back again so that we didn't affect our users. And then over the weekends, of course, it ran the whole time. I wanted to ask you, Justin, what advice you would give to your peers before we close. Tried to figure out how to leverage the backup and DR for additional business value. Basically, that was what came into opening it up to all of our users to just try to help them as much as possible. And that extra business value would really... It helped justify the purchase. Another thing I would recommend is to plan out your capacity plus 50%. That's pretty much what our snapshots are for a year. However, that's for file shares. If you have a database, like an SQL database or something like that, especially if you're running backups from SQL, you're going to have a lot more usage. And then there we're seeing about 120%. And then the only other thing is, you know, Murphy's Law will, will kill your DR solution. So try to make it as automated as possible, and that's really one of the things that we were going for, too. Take the human element out of it. Great advice. Thank you very much on behalf of the Wikibon community, Justin Bell of Strand Associates. Hey, thank you. I was happy to do it. So as a reminder, over the next 24 hours or so, we'll have up from Wikibon six research notes pertaining to the call today with, with user actions. So look for those. Feel free to hit edit and improve the pieces or put up your own piece or even write a wiki tip. So thanks for listening today, everybody, and thanks for being a Wikibon member. Chewing on a piece of grass, walking down the road. Tell me how long you're gonna stay here, Joe. Some people say 